Prostate cancer is always a big deal, and here at ASCO there have been some groundbreaking studies. Um, what do you think has been the big thrill for you in, in developments in prostate cancer? I think there's been one very major breakthrough at this conference, and it's a UK-based study, the Stampede study, which is looking at newly diagnosed disease, which hasn't been a focus of research. And so it's newly diagnosed high-risk or metastatic uh, disease very large study, several thousand patients, ongoing study, and that's shown a very significant benefit for, for docetaxel in addition to androgen deprivation therapy. Now that sounds simple the way you've yeah. said it, but it was a multi-arm study, wasn't it? And, and there's yeah. a bit of complexity there. Yeah, absolutely. Could you walk us through that? Yeah, a very complex study. So designed by, uh, uh, predominantly by Max Palmer and Matt Sides at the Medical Research Council, and a very innovative design. It was actually applauded for its innovation by the ASCO committee. And it's a multi-arm, multi-stage design. So you have a comparator of androgen deprivation therapy and then several other arms which, once completed, they can drop out and then new arms come in. But this was a reporting of, sort of two of the initial arms compared to, to androgen deprivation therapy alone. Now, using docetaxel early has been controversial, hasn't it? Very controversial, yeah, absolutely. There's been one, one positive study, the Chartered study, presented last year at ASCO by Christopher Sweeney, and the JETUG-16 study, which was negative, the, the Paris study. So in some ways, as Ian Tannock said in his, uh, in his dispute, it was 1-1 France versus America, and this was uh, extra time and the British making the decision. So good to, uh, good to uh, get a definitive result from that and Stampede's a very positive study for, for docetaxel. Indeed many people were waiting with bated breath for the yeah. results of Stampede. What in terms of the numbers did they get? Got a very significant overall survival benefit so from 43 months in your in your androgen deprivation therapy alone arm which is important because it shows that men with metastatic prostate cancer have this lethal illness and an improvement from 43 to 65 months so a real game changer and something that will change practice there are however other studies here and you had the privilege of or, or the initiative to um, have one where you were testing two new agents head to head against each other tell me about that. yeah a smaller study than stampede but i think an important study the terrain study a randomized phase two study of of 375 patients of bicalutamide one of the older antiandrogens versus enzalutamide one of the newer antiandrogens and a very significant benefit for the enzalutamide arm which i think was expected but enzalutamide had only ever been compared versus placebo so a higher bar than before Right, there is presumably a case to be made out for doing more head-to-head -head comparisons with some of these new agents. Yeah, I think there is. I think that partly head-to-head partly -head comparisons, I think partly also looking at how you... I think we've now got a, a group of patients who are on enzalutamide and abiraterone and becoming resistant, and it's sort of what's driving resistance, how can we overcome resistance, is that by substitution or addition? So lots of interesting things about tumour biology there as well. And it seems you can actually push the androgen deprivation further and further. I think to a degree, I mean a really good question, I think basically hard AR blockade certainly improves, improves outcomes for men and abiraterone and enzalutamide have shown that. I think the concern is are you going to drive new phenotypes of disease? And, of course, what could be the side effects? The, well, I think side effect profile-wise, both drugs have very good side effect profiles. Um, I think they're well tolerated. We use them a lot in clinical practice. I think you have to be careful with androgen deprivation therapy alone because of some of the metabolic and potential cardiovascular side effects. But abiraterone and enzalutamide are safe. I think one of the worries is what happens next. And that's not a criticism of the drugs because They've, they've really changed what we can do. But I think we're now seeing, perhaps, there's a, there was a, a nice study by Eric Small uh, from the, from the uh, West Coast Dream Team, which is a collaborative group, looking at and analysing uh, the tumour biology. And they, they showed that, that hard AR blockade with enzalutamide and abiraterone, in some cases, they're getting a different phenotype of disease. So you get evolution of the disease because of the treatment you're using? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, I think we don't know that definitively. I think we have to say it's small numbers, but it makes sense sort of from natural selection that if you block it, the androgen receptor, which is the dominant biological pathway, very hard, you are going to, if you then have a cell that escapes through a different mechanism, there's going to be a huge selection pressure to take that forward. And I think that's what we're seeing in clinical practice. And uh, Eric Small did a really nice job of sort of explaining some of the work that they've done, which is a really impressive bit of work. Well, looking at how some of these developments 
are going to affect practice and potentially could affect practice now. What should the cancer doctor take home? Let's look first of all at Stampede and then at your study terrain and, and then something about the biology. So Stampede first. So Stampede I think is very much the, the, the take home one, two and three message from this conference for prostate cancer doctors. I think it shows that docetaxel significantly improves outcomes for men with metastatic disease and I would say you'd have to have a very good reason not to, not to be treating your patients with that. So I think it will move docetaxel completely up front for all men with metastatic disease. And if they have high risk localised disease? High risk localised disease is more controversial because there wasn't an overall survival benefit as yet. There was a significant improvement in progression free survival and I think Ian Tannock in his discussion recommended against it. I would probably say it's a discussion that you should have bearing in mind other competing risks but in someone who's who's fit well, who's got, who's got very advanced localised disease, you have, to be, you have to be potentially discussing that. I don't, I don't think it's changing practice yet in high risk localised disease yet though. And with the super androgen deprivation agents, what's so, the advice there? Well, I think those, those drugs are already well established, and I think the, the data on enzalutamide supported the previous studies, particularly the Prevail study, but it showed that there's a significant benefit over what we were doing with bicalutamide, and so I would question the role of bicalutamide going forward. Pension is off? I think so. I have to say, if, if I was a man with metastatic prostate cancer, which is a lethal illness, I would want to know I was on the best treatment. And if you're on a treatment that's known to be inferior, then you're kind of waiting for that to fail. And although drug costs are significantly different between an old drug and a new drug, you've got to look at the other costs that are involved with it. Monitoring, increased scans, and also the psychological morbidity for, for patients. As a patient and as a doctor looking after patients, you want to be able to reassure them. Reassurance of both of you. So I think enzalutamide does that. Mm. Right, and as far as the evolution of d disease because of the therapy you're using, yes. how should cancer doctors be viewing that? I think again, I think as, as we touched on earlier, Peter, it was, it's very much sort of, we're, we're just learning about this area. So I would say the, the cell type that Eric Small talked about, where you have this very hard AR blockade with enzalutamide and abiraterone, and this, I think he called it an in, 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 uh, indeterminate atypical carcinoma, so a complete new category. It's a disease that doesn't tend to secrete PSA. So I think if you've got a patient who isn't so well on these drugs, you need to think, okay, has it changed its spot? Has it changed its phenotype? Is it now being driven by non-AR pathways? And do we now need to look at other drugs to, to challenge that? We need to be taking biopsies from these men. We need to be taking blood samples and really rigorously interrogating them to try and find new targets for, for treatment. Because patients, once they hit that stage, tend to do very badly, very aggressive disease.